Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. Nomad P PHP Lightning Talks are 10 minute talks that give a high level overview or an in depth look at a small portion of PHP related topics. Lightning Talks are a great way for new speakers to build their speaking resume and for long time speakers to test drive a new talk idea. Right now we have Jimmy Fersman, and tonight he's going to be talking about how to use Varnish to avoid API rate limits. Uh, please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Jimmy some feedback. And Jimmy, I'm going to make you a presenter, and you should be good. Great. Can we go? Can we see uh, the slide deck so far? Yeah, you look good. All right. So my name is Jimmy Fersman. I'm coming from you or to you from Seattle, Washington, and I just wanted to share a little trick that uh, me and the team at HammerQuest Studios in Seattle came up with this summer while we were working on our project. Um, the, the project was basically uh, a winery wanted to use some real-time weather data about its one of its vineyards on a uh, front end that was run on the expression engine platform in PHP. And uh, so we made a, a little coding letter plug-in that essentially they wrapped the weather underground API, and uh, that API, uh, as far as its courtesy API calls, allowed for um, about 500 API calls a day. And uh, as it turns out, each uh, each page load was really calling that API four times. So we weren't going to get very much traffic before we hit our API rate limit. And uh, what we what we really came up with was we didn't need exactly real-time data. We needed recent data. And once the weather data was logged, it wasn't going to change any again because it was archival. So we were really looking for a tool that would, without necessarily having to uh, add any sort of caching layer in the, in the PHP or in a templating system, a way that we could just uh, only refresh this API data when needed. And uh, the tool we came up with was Varnish. And uh, Varnish is a reverse proxy cache that is set up to take requests on a defined port, and that's usually going to be port 80. And then what it'll do is it'll, it'll match uh, on a number of criteria uh, the incoming request. And if it already has an item that matches that request in its cache, it'll serve that and will never ever allow the request to get back to your web application layer or PHP in our case. Uh, you generally would set um, Apache or your web server to run on a different port like 8080 instead of its typical port 80 and then Varnish will intercept the incoming request and if it needs to generate new content for its cache or it doesn't have the item in the cache it will go ahead and proxy the exact request that came in to that port 8080 to be served up by your web server. Now, it runs uh, on, your, on your box just as a service. It's very highly configurable. It has a uh, simple in its format, but really complex in its flexibility uh, configuration language that it runs on. And uh, it, so it's quite powerful. You can use it for software load balancing. You can match on all sorts of different criteria, file extensions, URLs. Um, any sort of headers that come in with request, and then it has the ability to eliminate uh, headers inbound and eliminate cookies inbound to start to normalize requests so that you can get more cacheable content or a greater cache hit rate. Well, in our, our case, we uh, were just putting the this API wrapper for the Weather Underground API under a specific folder on, on the website. So we were able to just use a very simple regex and match against uh, the first part of the URL so that all incoming requests to that URL or that URL family were going to be served through Varnish and then everything else would just be proxied right back to Apache and served up by the Expression Engine CMS. So it worked out fairly well for us. Um, I, as we were building this out, we kind of thought about what were additional use cases for this. Uh, in our case, it worked really well because we, again, we didn't need real-time weather data. We needed recent data, data within the last 10 minutes. So we didn't need to be making calls all the time. 
Um, but it would also work if, if a front end is under development or in its testing and you didn't necessarily need accurate or relevant data, you just needed valid data and, and it didn't um, need to necessarily be of a particular quality or context. It just needed to match the, uh, the schema that would allow the front end to do its job. Um, if you are working with uh, a scenario that uh, you're, you're dealing with a, an API rate limit like Twitter and you are going to get shut off at the end of uh, your 150 calls per hour or whatever it is, you could use something like this if you were trying to wrap the Twitter API or aggregate different social feeds, you, would, you could find a way to um, really lessen the load on the API side or the server side by using the, uh, the Varnish cache. And then um, perhaps too, if you've got a, a younger application or you're just getting going and you haven't necessarily um, built out your own uh, caching system in, in, your, in your API wrapper, then you could just throw this right in front of, of your endpoint and allow Varnish to do the work. And the beauty is, is that it doesn't require any extra libraries. Uh, you don't need to change any of your URLs. You don't have to have a test URL that you need to go and, and reconfigure when you do go live to your production server because all you're doing is moving around the ports that the services listen on. So Varnish then puts itself in front of Apache and it does the work for you and it's completely trained transparent to uh, Apache and PHP. So it's very easy to implement and then very easy to remove. So in order to get started with it, all you've got to do is install and configure Varnish. Uh, and then again, like I mentioned, you would configure Varnish to listen on port 80 and proxy the request back to port 8080. And then you'll set your web server to listen to those requests on port 8080. So it will grab everything proxied from Varnish. And then all you've uh, got to do is come up with a, a schema regex that would allow you to match your incoming URL requests so that you can decide whether or not you need to send it back to your application or you're going to allow Varnish to just completely handle the request and serve something uh, out of its static cache. And then anything that you don't want Varnish to handle, uh, you basically in the configuration file set up an else statement that's going to use what Varnish calls a pipe, which just shortcuts uh, all the requests and responses back to the, uh, the web server backend and then straight back to the client. So there's really nothing that you need to do in your front end JavaScript or your PHP application to allow the, the Varnish service to start proxying these requests. So I'm going to quickly show you here uh, the difference between this weather underground wrapper that, uh, that we implemented. And so we had a method called right now, which just shows the weather conditions at this vineyard in the eastern part of Washington state. And uh, all I had to do in the configuration file was add that we match uh, against the request URL for the uh, WU string for weather underground. And um, we're going to normalize all the requests by unsetting the cookie on the way in and then going and looking up for uh, a match against the entire URL string in the Varnish cache. And if not, it was going to return a pipe all the way um, out. So that would be any other request other than a uh, Weather Underground uh, API request would get proxy directly to the back end. So if you switch over here to Chrome, you can see on the left side of my screen, I have a uh, request to the local host. And what it's done is it's, it went and grabbed current conditions several minutes ago in the, at, at the uh, weather, ground, uh, weather station location and it returned back the JSON data. Now this request, the timestamp on it was at 5.15 p.m. here in, in Pacific time. And, and as you can see through the URL here, we're just doing a normal port 80 HTTP request. And if you look down here at the responses, you can see that it's been served by Varnish instead of PHP. And then if you come over here and do to the right side of the screen, I've got a more recent request and I've explicitly declared port 8080, which is what Apache is currently listening on. And it is the same format of data 
except this one was live at the time I made the request. And you can see that it was from 518 here, uh, Pacific time. And if you look down here at the headers, you've got no indication of being served by varnish because this one we, we bypassed varnish and went straight to PHP, had it um, request directly from the Weather Underground API and then present the JSON data to us here in the page. So if I hit these 8080 uh, URL, it's going to continually ask the Weather Underground API for updated data, even though the conditions haven't changed. So I'm going to run out of my API calls very quickly. Whereas over here on the port 80 side, Varnish will find the match in its cache and it's going to serve very, very similar and mostly accurate data because, again, the weather doesn't change all that quickly uh, without necessarily hitting my 500, um, my 500 request limit that I get on a daily basis through Weather Underground. So it's a very, very simple thing. No, uh, no dependencies to PHP, nothing we had to do there. The application could um, run the same in testing as it, as it was able to in production, and uh, we were able to never actually have to pay for a whole lot of uh, API load or to even generate a whole lot of API load to other underground in order to keep, um, you know, very recent data live on the front end of this website. So if you'd want to learn more about the Varnish Cache, uh, they have their own website with some great documentation. There's uh, a couple recent versions out there. It's a continually uh, improved piece of software. And I also included here a github.com link for a very robust and uh, kind of complex configuration file. But it's very good to take a look at uh, this one in particular because it shows you pretty much every option that you can do with Varnish and it's also uh, pre-configured with some cases for very common cookies, tracking pixels, things that you would find normally in a dynamic website that you might need to accommodate for if you're trying to use Varnish in front of a more robust um, web application or, or high, high traffic website. So if you'd like to uh, get more information about Varnish, I'll be in the IRC chat room for a couple more minutes, or you can hit me up on Twitter at, at Jeff Webb. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you would like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Please make sure you visit joined in and leave Jimmy some feedback.